Harry's back once again, friends, live and in color. Making the evening rounds, checking on the cattle up here in the hall. Done fed the hogs and chickens and working away, making the rounds. Got the old cows up here eating a little bit of hay here in the hay rack, feed rack, whatever you're going to call it, feed manger here in the barn. Well, pasture getting short. We've been getting a little bit of rain here in the last day or two. Enough to kind of help stuff. Pasture still short, so we're supplementing with a little bit of hay. Give them a little bit of hay water in the barn here in the hot part of the day. They like to come in here and get out of flies. It does make a difference. Keeps them used to coming back to the barn. Plenty of room for them to come in here and eat. Concrete floor in there makes it easy to clean out. We got a lot of skunk cows up here. I don't know if the camera's gonna pick it up or not. It's kind of dark here in the barn. It's crammed full of hay, which is a good thing. Two red skunks. Two black stripy skunks. Got hay square bales stacked here in the driveway. This is extra. We had left over. Got rolls in the lower shed. Hay strings from last year that we've kept. Tied up in bundles. This here is the driveway of the barn. You should be able to pull through here, but luckily we had a surplus of hay back from last year left over. So we had to utilize this space here and just stack these square bales here off on the ground on skid. So it worked out pretty good. Having a little surplus from last year because now this summer has turned off dry on us. Just barely getting by, so it's nice to have a little surplus of hay to fall back on. It makes a difference. That's why every year you want to build as much hay as you can because you never know when you're going to hit a dry spell and need some have to start feeding early. Back here is the calf stall. Got the red white face heifer calf in here. We've got this fixed up like a little creep feeder. Come back here, got feed trough sitting here on the wall on the ceiling. You got this little door over here where they come through. Just calves all can get back here in this stall. They come through right over there next to that post. Utilize this and get them used to eating feed. You need your feed, don't you have? Yes, you're ready. She's going to the trough. Let me get her a scoop. A handy little stall. Makes a difference if you give your calves a little bit of grain feed. It makes a difference whether you're going to keep them for replacement heifers or whether you're going to put them on the market and sell them when they get winging age. This way, you put extra pounds on them. Come on, heifer. Keep them used to eating that feed like that. And if you wean them off of keeper heifers, they know what feed is. They just keep eating when you put them up to wean them. Homemade souped up door latch. Welded up. Works real good. Heavy duty. Redneck ingenuity. Granddad made that when he Built this cattle shed and engineered all this little door stall back here. You just utilize what you have. You don't have to go to co-op or tractor supply or somewhere to get you some latches or whatever you need. Just utilize what you got and make your own stuff. Save a dollar everywhere you can. Okay, I like that feed now.
I don't know how well the camera is going to pick it up. It's kind of dark back in here. She has a red white face. Herford heifer. She got all the marking. White streak down the neck. White streak on both ears. Tip of the tail. White face. White under her belly and white on her feet. She's out of good stock. Be a real replacement heifer. Wean them off and they get weaning age. Then cross them back over. They get big enough to breed with a Angus bull or one of them key Angus. Get you a black white faced calf or a black baldy calf. They like him on the market pretty good. They grow good, you take that hybrid cross. They grow good, put it puts extra pounds on at wean time. They like them on the market. These old white faces, you can't beat them. Gentlemen can't be. That's one thing about them, they got good temper. But it helps you've got to be around them too. You've got to check on them every day. They know who feeds and takes care of them. Eating at certain times, they know where to come to get their hay and feed at. You've got to check on your cattle, just like everything else, whether it's dog, hog, chickens, you got to check on. A lot of people just get cattle and turn them loose and never look at them until they get ready to go sell them, then they can't catch them because they can't get near them. Keep anything gentle, you got to be around it. And this heifer here is out of the, the white faced bull. Big Tommy we got here on the place. He's out of good stock, good bloodline, domino stock. Red white faced Hereford are getting few and far between. You see more black hided cattle getting spread around through the country now, which they all good cattle. Everybody's got their own opinion of what's best. Some people like Angus, some people like Charlays, short horns, you name it. Just depends. To each their own. They're a lot of different breeds of cattle out there, a lot of good breeds. The further down south you go, they like a lot of Brahmas and Brahma crosses for heat tolerance and stuff like that. Different region, different scenario. Not everybody's the same. Everybody does stuff a little bit different. They like that sweet feed now. Make sure our handy dandy latch is shut. Good to go. Good to have a place to feed in the dry, especially in the winter time. We feed square bales up here in the winter time twice a day, morning and night. This way you can control how much hay you give them. If you give them too much, they'll try to pull it out and waste it. This way you feed them twice a day, you can keep them full, keep them fed. If you give them too much, they'll waste it, so you bust it up, split it up twice a day, just let them eat what they want. They don't waste it. They stay in good shape.
They like it in here where it's dark so the flies don't bother them so bad. About done, ain't you, Heaven? You working on that feed? That's bought sweet feed right there. Uh, nowadays, it's cheaper to buy it than you can grow it. We used to grow and grind our own feed. We got the grinder, corn planter, corn picker. Just ain't got enough ground to put out the corn no more. For everything we have has to be in hay and pasture just to get by on. What we got there just to feed the cattle. It'd be nice to have enough ground we put out corn grinder on feed again, but you can't find ground right here to rent no more. Ain't nothing further to do with it. You just got to adjust with the times and go with it. Years ago, everybody grew their own corn, ground their own feed. About all these old feed mills around here shut down. Used to Otway over in Greenville. Lester, a little fella what run it, he done a lot of grinding there. He passed away a few years ago and they shut it down. That mill had been there forever. Nothing stays the same, I reckon that's progress. This is 36 feet from where the cattle come in back to the gate where the stall is. They've got 36 feet in all these different spots they can come in here and eat. Put their head in the hay rack here and eat hay. They've got plenty of room. You can winter a lot of cattle in here like that. Granddad come up with that system right there building a hay rack like that. They built this barn originally years ago, put loft in this side. Let the cattle come in and have a place to feed, plus tear this middle driveway off and lower shed to have a place to hang tobacco. We were still big into tobacco at that time. Well, that been many years ago. I wish everything as good as it now as it was back then. That's just a little history on the barn and the feeding system. Everybody's got different setups. It's just what works for us. Depends on your situation. Some people feed outside. We've got cattle different places on rented property. Some places there we feed outside because we have no choice. It's rented ground. There's no barn, nothing to utilize. So on those places we do feed outside. We have no choice. We've got cattle sp spread out all over creations. It'd be nice to have a big piece of ground, have everything all in one spot. Small acreage around here, you just gotta grab a few acres where you can, when you can. Harry's got to go finish making the round. Y'all come back and see us now. Have a good evening.